Okay, so I've just been playing with the cooling system on the Daimler, um, and I haven't really stopped and thought about how it works until just uh, having gone through that exercise. So I've just drawn out this schematic to, to for my own benefit, really. Um, the the pump is is here, obviously, on the front of the engine, driven off the, uh, the crankshaft. Uh, these are the two banks of the uh, cylinder block. So there's a block on the um, right hand side of the car, block on the left hand side of the car, and the head connected to it. So that the pump is feeding straight into the block on the uh, on the right hand side, and also that same passageway comes across bridges across to the the other bank, the left hand bank. So the primary flow from the from the water pump is into the block on both sides. On the head side, at the top of the engine, the uh, the water comes back out again into this cross casting. In fact, it is that bridges between the two heads. So in at the bottom, out at the top, and both of them feed across into the thermostat housing, which everybody will be familiar with that knows about these engines. Um, Instantly, the therm sorry, the temperature sensor is here, so it's picking up the, the water as it comes off the heads and back into the rest of the cooling system. The thermostat housing is here with the thermostat inside. Um, the thermostat will be closed when the engine is cold, of course, so it'll block off this seat here. Uh, there's a tapping here as well on the thermostat housing, which will allow water to flow along here into the manifold. Um, and out of the manifold and back round to the pump. So it joins the pump on the suction side. This is a larger diameter channel straight into the blocks and out of the heads, but the smaller one comes into a T here and into through the pump. So when the thermostat's closed, there's a be, there'll be a small flow through here because there's actually a deliberate hole in the thermostat. Um, but the bulk of the flow will be through the, the manifold, in fact. Um, meanwhile, there is also, of course, the heater that picks up on a T um, from this same line, and the, the flow feeds into the valve, which is obviously operated from inside the car via the cable through the heater. It's going at the, the bottom, comes out at the top. Um, and that also flows back around here and back to the pump ultimately. So when the engine is cold, the only way that flow kind of happens really is a small amount through the thermostat, but the bulk of it's happening through the manifold and or the, the heater. So my having disconnected the manifold for 20 years is actually quite a bad idea, I realize now. Um, in, in fact, I mostly had the heater on permanently, but if it was shut, and there was no way for the flow, the coolant to flow through here, then when the engine's cold, you could actually block off the uh, this sort of bypass flow, which would be bad news really, because you need a bit of flow through here a, to make sure the thermostat is aware of the temperature of the engine, and also that this temperature sensor is picking up the right temperature. So you do really need that low volume flow right from cold Anyway, once the, uh, the thermostats start to open, then obviously you get the main flow through straight into the radiator, through the expansion tank and into the top hose of the radiator and cooling it and out of the bottom connection on the radiator, straight back into the pump. So once you're up to temperature, so the bulk flow is just, it's just around this straightforward loop, essentially complicated slightly by the two banks and these right lines splitting, but um, there is sort of, uh, fast flow rate through here uh, and this heating of the manifold and heating in the car interior heater can happen as well but uh, it seems to be it when the engine is cold that um, this manifold circuit is particularly important so yeah I've learned something there but uh, so maybe it's obvious to everybody else but I just thought that was worth uh, sketching down the other realization I've come to, having been playing with the system recently, is that these uh, entrance to the heater and uh, X from the heater, as well as the manifold for that matter, these are all quite high with respect to the expansion tank and the rest of the system. So in fact, 
coolant doesn't seem to stay in the heater and these tubes um, when the engine is turned off and certainly when it's cooled down. It seems to rely on the pressure from the pump coming out of the, the heads to actually force coolants up through these hoses into the manifold and the heater. So with the engine running, so there's actually quite a lot of air in these, these hoses back here, which I hadn't really realized. Like I've always thought that this, these uh, the connections to the heater, for example, are, are quite high with respect to the expansion tank. But um, you always wonder when you're, filling, you're topping up the system, thinking, well, there's no way that uh, coolant is going to make its way from where I'm filling it up, up to the heater. And sure enough, that doesn't seem to be the case. It does seem to rely on the, the pressure from the pump to get the uh, coolant up there only when the engine is running. So yeah, that's it's kind of interesting, but uh, it seems to be just the way it works.